Hello everybody, my name is Bubble Zest and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video we'll be attempting the achievement Don't Die for Your Country. Oh, this is going to be a fun one I think. So, let's begin shall we? Single player, new game. And for once we cannot be in Gathering Storm, we have to be in Blitzkrieg. Hearts of Iron 4's forgotten other mode technically. Updating history, but still we're going to go for the default of Germany. Not that we have a choice. <laughs> Anyway, let's begin, shall we? Oh, just so I clarify, this is talking about that most achievements can't be gotten. We can still get the achievements we need. And here it is, the 1939 start date. Being a thing most people probably haven't even seen outside of doing achievements like this. There are some very weird quirks with this though, like, for instance, the Sudetenland for some reason is not our core. Neither part of it is, I mean Bohemia isn't, but that makes sense, but why isn't the Sudetenland? No idea. But anyway, we've got a lot of housekeeping to do before we can even get started. So let's begin, shall we? I'm only creating an intelligence agency because old habits. Not too necessary, but eh, you know, if you want to continue this game, may as well. Anyway, here's the Maginot Line. Grab all units out on it, all 22 of them, and take off the motorised. You can leave these 21 units here. Just deters France in any real sense of pushing us. There you go. Of course, there's the Ostwall that's here. That will really stop them too. Now in Ostprussen, grab the 13 units out of here and put them on a front line as well. But for the tank that's the next... There. But for the tank that's in this area, put it on a fallback line that's next to Danzig. There we go. Make sure it's there as quickly as possible. Anyway, let's grab the rest of the units. There you go. 88 to start, so let's gather them up. We're going to start with all of the tanks that we can find. There should be, from my memory, 10. There we go, there's the tanks. Now grab the motorized, there will be a few variants of that too. And grab the paratroopers. Perfect. Now that this is a good 18 stack, but we can make it a little better. So grab six infantry divisions, there you go, put them over, and along with the paratrooper, chain them over to motorized. There we go. Send all of them to Wilhelmshaven, and as quickly as possible. Now, for the general we're going to be using for them, yet again it is going to be Kurt Student, just because of how useful Commando is. You could probably go for ones like Rommel, Manstein, or Guderian, and you could not have too much trouble, but I like out of supply. Right. And now we have the rest of Germany's little, little army. I say that, that's not true, it's relatively big. 64 divisions, so let's break these up. There you go, you'll get three armies like this. Now these ones will not be as necessary for us, so we're going to give them hmm, Gunther von Klug, as well as hmm, the 21 units on the Maginot line. But for the units that aren't on the Maginot, we'll just put them on a front line all the way from Slovakia to near Danzig. They're not really necessary for this, you could probably just leave them as they are, but if you're going to do it, may as well do so. Hmm. You know, let's see what random other generals we can give them, ones that you don't really see. Ah yes, Paulus. Lovely. List. Any other Maddos we can use? Kruger, perfect. <laughs> right, for these 37 that are left, we'll give them a field marshal. In this instance, I believe Moldal is probably the best just because of him being a brilliant strategist. It's not too important, the field marshal, though, to be honest. Anyway, we now have to plan our naval invasions. We have to take out Britain and France. So what we're going to do is something very interesting. So we're going to use the tanks to hit as many ports as they can, all the way from Dunkirk to probably somewhere like Cherbourg. That'll be the tank's job to land and rush down Paris, as usual. And there you go. A nice wide front, once they land they can rush down Paris and fall France. What we're going to do next though is a bit more interesting. Now, if you don't know, naval invasions you can only do in the capacity that you have, but you can still plan future invasions. So what we're going to do is immediately plan some extra invasions that the tanks can take once Britain has fallen. I mean France has fallen I should say. So we're just going to plan extra naval invasions. Now this looks very complicated but it's not too important. 
just means once the tanks land, there will be no invasions that they can take. Similarly, we're going to be doing a similar strategy for the motorized. So we're going to plan an extra 14 invasions into the UK. So once the tanks leave, we can let the motorized go. Once France falls, pretty much. We're going to do it almost at the same moment. Similarly, for many of the Germany runs we've been doing recently, we're going to have to hit ports in the south. One's near Dover, near Norwich. But we're also going to hit north around Hull, also around Edinburgh and Cardiff and so on. The biggest thing is just having these naval invasions ready so we can assign them once the time is right. Because these naval invasions will be planned and we can use them. We can just assign units to them once we have slots available. Right, we now have all the naval invasions we'll need pretty much ready. So again, the tanks will take France and then we'll take these naval invasions that we've planned. The motorized will be assigned to these ones once the tanks have the, have landed in France and there will be slots available for them. <sighs> it's a lot of housekeeping for this achievement, but anyway, let's continue on. You have a lot of political power, so we're going to hire ourselves an army logistics and an armor genius. The infantry one is useful, but meh. I'm going to go for the motorized armor today. Also, we're going to hire Heinz Gideon as our Blitzkrieg Clearest for more armor speed. And we're also going to get Goering as our Chief of Air Force because hmm, more ground support is useful. Want to spend any other political power? Eh, up to you. Next up will be to grab all of Germany's Air Force and put it over the English Channel. Put it on whatever you like, I'm going to do all of these. It will give us, hopefully, the blip of supremacy we need once we activate. For Germany's Navy, put it all together. Put the Greeks Marine and put them on strike force in these sea zones, obviously merge them together. We only need a blip of supremacy long enough, and the AI is a bit finicky with supremacy most of the time. Yeah, that is pretty much it. If you also want, by the way, I should mention, you can grab Slovakia's units. Uh, if you really want to take down Poland, uh, why not? We'll make a unified command. Sorry, Tizo. <laughs> yeah, you still have more political power, you do have more focuses, which... Hmm, and research. May as well just do any random ones, it's not too important. This achievement could be done within the month if we're good at it. You know, let's befriend China because I'm a madman. You don't have to do Danzig like War, you already have the war goal. That's the point of the Blitzkrieg starting date. We're going to also build a lot more motorized. We have plenty of guns right now. Yes, I'm buying the materials from the Netherlands. We might not even go to war with them, to be honest. Anyway, we're not going to go to speed 5 and begin. We're going to go very slowly. And keep an eye on Poland for now. Then, who you need to keep an eye on. Uh, your choice with Bulgaria. You know what, because I hate Bulgaria is claimed in this game, I'm going to say, No! Another thing I forgot to mention is that you probably should move some of these aircraft into airports so they can actually reach the sea. Should have done that sooner actually, but whatever. Only click the ones that can't actually make it, so you don't overstack your airfields. Obviously some might not be able to make it at all, but that's the risk you have to take in a way. Ah, this is very important. Poland always shuffles its lines like this, so Danzig is now empty, so we must declare war now. Walk into Danzig with your tank. Also, this obviously begins World War II, so if you're not ready, mm, there you go. Make sure you have a unit in there for that. Don't need to lose Danzig. Yes, our naval invasions aren't ready, but that's okay. That is honestly okay. Right, we've got five days before our neighbor invasions are ready to go. So if there's ever a time for that, keep an eye on it. Poland may push against your lines. I don't know what controls it. It's kind of random, but don't worry. It will be okay. Right. Tanks have left. 
we're gonna only be on the tanks for this moment. And down goes France. Perfect. You must do Germany, you will conquer all. And now the next step of the plan is now activated. Right, with your motorised, assign them to all naval invasions that hit from Germany. Right, that's 10 and they will leave. There you go. Right, what you're going to do now is delete all of these active naval invasions. It means that we can assign more units to naval invasions, by the way. There you go. Now you had these four that were unfortunately not able to leave, but now we can. There you go. And now they have left. And delete their naval invasion orders too. Now, now you must use the tanks. If there's any unit like this one, leave it alone. It's not a problem for us. Actually, so yeah, deleted all of these lines. There you go. Now we're going to assign all the tanks to all these orders. Any tank that doesn't get an order will just go to port, so you have these four. Right now it's pretty good, zero casualties, I think that's <laughs> a good start. Oh poor Hess, quote unquote. So we now have many, many naval invasions underway. The UK will probably guard some of its ports, though, so keep that in mind. Well, that's a good start. The tanks have made landfall. Send the tanks into London. They're the quickest for that job. There you go. Intersection. Again, keep this in mind. It doesn't matter. Right, the UK is capitulating. Now, as you can see here, we have 9,000 casualties, and you're thinking the achievement's not going to fire. Well, I'll come back to this in a moment, but it's time for the peace deal. UK should capitulate, there you go. Perfect. For Poland and France will just take everything. Right, here's the peace deal, Treaty of Plymouth. There we go. Now again, as a, we took 9,000 casualties, but you're thinking, Bubbles, the achievement has failed. No, it hasn't. And here is why. Right, as you can see here from this still from my practice game, I've already taken 3,000 casualties in this war, so by all account, the achievement should no longer fire. I had decided though, as I was kind of annoyed doing a lot of practice for this, to just finish the war anyway, because well, why not? It's therapy at the end of the day. So as we go through the rest of the war, I'm like, who cares about casualties? Let's just get to the peace deal. There's the peace deal. Run quickly through it. And there, right there, is probably the most important thing. The achievement still fires. Now, you're probably wondering, why? Why did the achievement still fire for you? You took casualties, right? Yeah, I did. I took far too many casualties. So we go to the wiki for this, which says you can also just capitulate the majors in the war and in the peace deal take all the required Polish and French states. After the peace deal is done, the game will see that you control the required states and because you are at peace it means you took zero casualties and you'll earn the achievement. 
If you don't understand what that means, this achievement is quite literally broken. For, you, for this achievement, you literally just have to win the war. Casualties be damned. You could take a million casualties, but as long as you're at peace, it will still fire. It's very weird, per se, but, you know, I can't necessarily complain about that. The amount of microin involved in this achievement is very weird. But, you know, I can't, again, can't complain. I got the achievement. I'm not going to complain that the achievement is quite literally broken. But, you know, you know, <laughs> it's all a bit meh at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a weird thing, but, you know, it worked out in the end, didn't it? We got our achievement. I don't care if it's quite literally broken, an achievement's an achievement. To be fair, what we actually did in this run, all things considered, probably would have given us the achievement if I bothered to micro it properly, or went slower, faster, or whatever. We totally, totally could have done it by casualties. We had no casualties for Poland or France. It's just that the one, the AI can see your naval invasion, so likely the UK decided to fall back. So, eh. But you know, an achievement's an achievement at the end of the day, so cannot complain about that in, now that I think about it. I don't really care for the 1936 start, though, to be completely honest. It's meh at the end of the day. Like. Uh, what, what can I say about it? Most people would only ever play it for this achievement and the other one. What's that other one? Uh, 30 minutes of hell, 30 minutes of hell. Which definitely is a hell achievement, not one you can particularly cheese so badly. But we managed to cheese this one pretty well, I'd say. We literally used the game against it because paradox. <laughs> But yes, I thank you for watching this video. I do very much hope you've enjoyed it. Leave any suggestions in the comments below for future videos. Always looking for new video ideas. But until next time, everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, and goodbye.